Hi everyone, good afternoon um, to everyone and um, welcome to our webinar on uh, creativity using the iPads and Apple technologies. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to, to, to see some attendees coming in to, to, uh, for this webinar and we've got some wonderful guests today uh, for the webinar and uh, I'd just like to introduce the, the guests that we've got today. Um, we've got um, Mike Bycraft, who's the Head of Design and Innovation at Career International School in South Korea. Uh, Mike is a fantastic educator. He's doing some incredible stuff with creativity, and I can't wait to hear what he's got to say with some of the things that he's been doing in the classroom. We've also got Kerry Lee Beasley, and Kerry Lee is, uh, is working in China at the moment at Western Academy of Beijing, and she's the high school learning and technology coach. And I've known Kerry for quite a long time now, and we've, we've been to various conferences together and uh, done some fantastic stuff, and Kerry is just a whiz uh, creativity and using things like the iPad to do some really fantastic stuff. So again, really looking forward to what Carrie's got to offer. And then finally, we've got Gary Johnston and Gary is uh, is working in Peru at the moment. And I know it's very early in Peru at the moment, Gary. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce the school correctly. Collegio Franklin Delanio Roosevelt. Is that right? Did I pronounce that correctly? <laughs> you know, with, with, with an English accent, it sounds perfect. But... <laughs> Fantastic. So, and, and Gary's the innovation and learning coach. And again, Gary has done some incredible stuff. He's done some brilliant stuff with science. His background is very much in science, uh, science work, but he's also recently in the last few years done a lot of innovation with technology, particularly using the Apple, the Apple products and, and, uh, and things like that. So I'm really excited to see what Gary Gary's got to offer. Before we um, um, come on to uh, the discussion with, with the group, I'd just like to, to, to go through our training team here at Jigsaw. Um, I'm Richard Poth, and uh, I'm one of the um, professional uh, development uh, specialists, a professional learning specialist at Jigsaw 24. And what my job is to do is to actually work with lots of schools around the country, um, working with the students, working with the teachers in supporting technology and in integrating technology across the curriculum. And I've got a team, we've, well, we've got a team, there's a team of us working at Jigsaw and Terry um, and, and Terry and we've got Megan first, Megan Brown. Megan Brown, she can't join us today, unfortunately, but Megan's uh, working in the Southeast with me. And then we've got um, Terry, if, uh, there we go, Terry Coons and Ter Terry's in the call today as well. So she'll be joining us. And then we've got Paul Tullock, all of us working as, as the team that's working around the country, supporting students, but supporting teachers in moving technology forward. So that's us, that's the Jigsaw 24 uh, education training team. And we're all excited to, um, uh, to listen to and hear what our guests have got to say today. So I'd just like to ask my first question. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. So nice to see you all. And, uh, and it's great to, uh, I've worked with everyone in the call here um, on, on uh, numerous occasions and it's so great to see you all. Um, so I'd like to start by uh, just opening up the question really on to, to find out how you're using Apple technologies to really enhance the creativity in learning either in your school or, or in the classroom. Um, so, I mean, can we maybe start with, um, Let's start with Gary. So, Gary, can we can we can you uh, maybe just do an introduction to yourself first, and then uh, on what you're doing, and then maybe if you could go into the answer in the question, that'd be great. Sure. So my name is Gary Johnston, and I am an innovation learning coach in the middle and high school here at Colegio Franklin Delano Roosevelt in Lima, Peru. Uh, this is my 19th year of teaching. I have a lot of experience teaching math and science, but I've worked uh, in uh, as an ed tech advocate and uh, technology integrationist for the last probably six years or so. Um, I think one thing that separates Apple products, or really what stands out with Apple products is, for me is just the myriad of apps that they have. Uh, we use Google Apps as a lot of the backbone of what we do in our school, uh, which are wonderful. But I think in terms of student choice and creativity, uh, Apple products are just the best. Um, looking at it from a practicality aspect of how we implement this in teaching and learning, um, I, I, I really approach my use to or my, my approach to digital technology 
centers around a lot around universal design for access. So if you've heard about universal design for access or instruction, uh, we can provide multiple ways for students to show their learning. So there's not one set learning product that we direct students to. But what that's really meant for me in my practice is saying, this is what we're doing. Here's maybe five or six apps you guys can choose. And even in suggesting that, I still have students that kind of come out of left field and say, oh, Mr. Johnson, for this project, I wanted to use Procreate, which is a great Apple product. And um, it's a paid app. So sometimes I don't uh, advocate for students to download paid apps if they don't already have them. But uh, just what they produce ends up just being a work of art. And showcasing this to the parents on our, on our classroom blog or in social media channels or in principal's announcement really helps build that capacity for what these products can do. Oh, that's fantastic, uh, Gary. Yeah, I mean, Procreate is, is definitely one of the apps that I've used in the past and that you can do some incredible stuff with it. I'm, I'm seeing there, Mike's probably got it on his, his, his iPad oh. already with his Apple Pencil. Well, let's go to you now, Mike. Um, um, what, what's, uh, what's your thoughts? I mean, what kind of um, creative, creativity have you got going on with the, uh, with the, the Apple technologies in where, you're, when you, where you are in South Korea? Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. So I'm Mike Bycraft. Uh, I worked with Rich and Gary at Korea International School, and they've since gone on to their different adventures. So I'm still here, uh, and I teach a lot of different classes in the middle school and high school. Uh, I'm in my 15th year of education, and before that, I was a scientist in university uh, working for University of Michigan. So I've had a pretty interesting background using technology. So for me, with a lot of my classes, I do like robotics and makerspace, I really struggled with how to have my students like how do you assess somebody who's, who's building a bridge or a golf course or a chair or a robot that does something? Uh, and I struggled a lot to find out a way to do it. Well, what we ended up doing now, and I love it, and I'll share some stuff with y'all later, is uh, to have the students are creating these websites. So every student that I work with has uh, either a MacBook or an iPad. Uh, we're actually doing a rollout program with like some of the iPad pros with the keyboards now to kind of see if those can replace our laptops. Um, and the students will basically document their learning journey. So they're gonna take video, they're gonna take pictures with their phone, they're gonna all share it with each other, you know, everything's connected, they're airdropping stuff to each other, to me, and then they're in charge of, of how it's assessed. So if I say, hey, I want you to build something that does this, uh, then I say, you know, you, you have to make me a website, uh, I'd love to see video of them testing it. Uh, some of my more creative students will do failure montages, so we do a lot of stuff with like iMovie uh, where they're in and they're editing and adding sound effects and, you know, use Procreate, you can sketch on stuff and do blueprints and you're sharing it with each other. Uh, but it's just that letting them kind of showcase their learning. So I'm not the one anymore requiring them to do that. I'm just like, yeah, create this website and then everybody and the website's public. So their parents see it, the school sees it and it just showcases all their work. They can put in documents, they can link whatever they want, slide decks. And, you know, like Gary was saying, uh, giving the students that big choice is kind of the, the key to that, in my opinion. You know, some of my kids are gonna use Procreate, some are gonna pick up, I have a kid last year who was just really into Blender. And so it was like, yeah, do, do what you want. Like they're getting that agency to choose the way they're expressing their learning. And it, it just, it's so seamless to just kind of, hey, put these things you want, showcase. And, and then they also, they're picking and choosing the things they think are important. Like I might miss that as a teacher. You know, uh, one kid, I might look at what they're doing and not see some of the cooler details, but now they can showcase it. Oh, here's this video I made. Here's these, uh, the blueprint broken down. And it's, it's really kind of changed the way I teach is using this technology. Like it's, it's such an essential part of my class now. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. My thank you. That's fantastic. I mean, I, what I love about that is that personalization of the learning mm -hmm. and, and it's authentic as well. It's that it's taking that authenticity. And because I know at Korea International School, it's very much down the applied learning route. And, mm -hmm. and I think that authenticity of what they're doing and you become that facilitator, don't you? You become that facilitator of edu educating the students and giving them the freedom to explore what they need to do. That's fantastic. Thanks for that, Mike. Um, Kerry Lee, um, what's, um, uh, what's your take on it? Hi, guys. I'm Kerry Lee, and at the moment I'm joining you from my kitchen, so sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to find a quiet place in my house where my kids are and dog is still around, so fingers crossed they keep quiet for us today. Um, 
so I don't know, I've, I've spent a lot of my years as a primary school teacher, but recently I've joined the middle and high school at, um, at Western Academy of Beijing, had to think about that for a second, been at so many schools these days. <laughs> but um, but I, I'm going to talk about something that I'm not necessarily, I am using with my students right now, but something that I really want to focus on for um, for just now is the addition of the Apple Pencil. So when, when the iPads came out with the Apple Pencil, then for me, just so many different um, possibilities opened up and for students as well. Um, it used to be a real battle between either paper or technology, but now it's more like a yes and. So yes, we can do this and we can also do this. So we can take a photo of something and we can annotate it. Or, um, so if I think about that in a high school context, um, and I'm, I couldn't believe you, you mentioned Procreate straight off the bat, Gary. That's totally what I was going to, going to say. So stealing my thunder. Um, so I teach a grade 10 design class. Um, it's an MYP middle years program um, design class. And one of the things that we have to do is a lot of sketching. So we have a, a bunch of iPads. We're lucky enough to be one-to-one -one MacBook um, in school, as well as having other iPads and so on to bring into the classroom. So um, we were doing our, our sketches in Procreate. And what I love about that is not only do you have that ability to use the pencil to draw, to annotate so that you get the thinking, but it also makes a little movie of the process. So you're not just analyzing the finished product. You've got the recording of how they went about doing that, which of course, then you could have them um, talk over to explain their thinking as they went through. So I think it's just opening the doors to um, those multimodal um, possibilities that my fellow presenters today have already mentioned. And, um, and I think it's bridging the gap now between, um, I, like, I, I really don't like to be, you know, paper books or um, ebooks, um, it's reading, isn't it? So I think um, we're getting a little bit closer now with, with some of those things, which I love. No, I, 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 absolutely. I think we, we totally are. And I mean, you mentioned the pencil and I think that has been a game changer. And it also, you, it, it, even, you know, with uh, iOS 14 coming in with Scribble as well, that has just been wonderful to, to, to see what, what the students can do with Scribble. Because now what you're doing is like you say, it, it's not, it's, it, you can do everything now. You can talk to the iPad, you can type, you can write, you know, you can do everything now. You don't really need that other stuff there. And, and it's all stored that in, 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 in terms of digitally. I mean, I was just thinking Procreate, I know it's a paid app, but there is, I mean, you can also, some of the things that you're talking about Keynote. there, you can actually do it on Keynote, yeah. So that, and, those and you don't what, need the Apple Pencil either. Like any stylus will work, your finger works. It's still pretty amazing. Absolutely. I mean, Keynote it does do that recording. It's, it's lovely to see uh, the kids. Uh, and obviously Keynote is one of the free apps that you can get on the iPad. Fantastic. Um, th oh. Thanks, guys. Thanks for answering that, uh, that question. All right. So what I want to now look at is really about assessment and feedback. So... Um, how do you record the learning uh, that the students are creating? So, I mean, I'm, I know Mike touched on this a little bit and then feedback and then assess what they have achieved. So um, Mike, can we start with you this time? Sure. Um, so I, what I do is I tend to give pretty open, uh, like everything I do is, is project-based learning. So everything we do is usually a project and that can be a smaller scale project like build a robot that, that goes here for five meters or, you know, build a bridge or like right now we're, we're building uh, board games. Um, so what I do with my design students is I give them, uh, like they keep a running journal and it can be the formats they like. I do a lot of stuff with Google. And so a lot of them will use Google Docs uh, because it's shareable and everybody shares it. So they're updating each week, here's what I did. Here's the work I did this class. Here's what I did. And they can take snapshots. They can put links to other things, to other documents, to um, whatever they're working on. And so it's, it's almost a running tally for me to see what everyone's doing day to day. And so that's kind of a nice way to assess uh, each day's progress and just make sure they're on the right task. And, you know, you can look at a kid who maybe hasn't added a lot that journal. And, and if you see him in class too, you, okay, hey, so I noticed there's not a lot here and you seem a little off task. So here's some more things of what I need to see. And I can give them kind of a, a daily requirement. And then for the larger scale assessments, I tend to give a, a guide for the website um, that's like, hey, I need you, like they'll create 
one big page that's like there, you know, it'd be rich path, um, chaos engineering. And then you'd have a sub page for, for this project, sub page for the other project, sub page for another one. And I say, you know, you need, uh, I need to see maybe six areas like the design process, uh, a video of the final performance or task or someone else using your whatever you created. Like sometimes we do a, a project where they'll have to find a teacher as a client and they have to build something for that teacher and they can 3D print it or laser cut it or whatever. And then, you know, I, I'd love to see, you know, get some feedback, talk to the people. Um, but I, I, I usually ask them to document everything, right? I'm never gonna see too much material. And usually with my students, they're really good judges of how to showcase their work. And, and they're also great judges of showcasing failure, which I love. And they'll say, hey, here's trial number one, trial number two, trial number 78. And these are examples of where it wasn't successful and, and here's its current iteration. And to kind of touch on Carrie talking about the Apple Pencil, like I love it because we can annotate, we can, you know, you scribble, hey, take a screenshot and, and circle the problematic things. Show me what's wrong with it. Make some notes on this. And they're just then documenting it all. So I'll give them a, a relatively detailed rubric uh, for a website, but it's, it's better than saying, hey, you're writing a paper. Your paper should look like this. You're writing it. But if a kid wants to type up a doc and that's part of their website, that's fine, right? Because all of our learners are kind of coming at these from different angles. And with the technology, I can say, yeah, it's all going to be in your website, but it can be you know, I'd love to see four pictures here, but it could be 20 if you want, or I'd love to see you document the process and, and write down your journal. Like they'll always link their journal in the website too. So it's just giving them that opportunity to go through and then I can check it. And what I love is one of the upsides of virtual school is now we do parent teacher conferences like this. So I'll have the parent on one window and the kid on another, and I can pull up the kid's work and I can pull up their website and then we can all talk about it. Hey, here's, here's some video of what your kid's done and here's some pictures. And a lot of times the parents are really surprised. Wow, this is what they did. You know, this is the stuff they're doing. And it's great to be able to show it off. And, and my students are kind of documenting their work via their technology. And then it's all got a record, everything's shared, and we can all interact with it the same way. And I can comment on it and I can say, hey, here's an area I'd love to see this improved, or here's some you know, ways you could change this. And then it's, it's fixable, it's a living document. So it's never like, here's your final paper. It's like, yeah, let's, let's update this, let's fix this. And I think that's been super successful. It's changed the way I assess with technology. I don't think I could go back to, here's a test, Here's, you know, do this worksheet for me kind of thing. Like it's all this. I don't think I've used uh, paper too much in my class other than for sketching or brainstorming in a couple of years now. And I mean, that's fantastic, Mike. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Some of the things there that you said, I mean, and I think the, the pandemic has been key in pushing that kind of thing forward, particularly the things where you're talking about, you know, having those video conferences with the parents now, rather than having those one-to-one, because you can, you can share so much more digitally than you would, yeah. you would, you don't, rather than sitting opposite a, t uh, a parent and then turning the computer around to show them what they're doing. Yeah. You can do that much more, much easier now. And, and I'm guessing Gary, because, you know, you've been pretty much in lockdown in Peru for 15 months now. So I'm, I'm assuming, you know, the assessment side of what you're doing with technology, you, you're doing very similar things. Is that right? Yeah, similar to Mike, um, one thing, so when I'm, when I look at assessing the student work, um, I really tend to look at the verbiage of the standard. Uh, so right now, and I said teach science um, and next generation science standards, we have a number of strands for like engineering, but also performance standards. Um, however, that being said, what I also tend to do is if there are standards that are maybe lower on, for example, depth of knowledge indicators or Bloom's taxonomy, where you're asking students to cite or identify or list, uh, you can use automation. You can use select response to save up time so you don't over rubric everything. Uh, but for some verbiage that maybe ask students to model or diagram or to explain, we then have opportunities to differentiate the product for students to write or to model or to build. And this is where having a, a choice of apps and showing how they want to do that is completely up to the student and also is really empowering. Uh, one of the things that is really, uh, what I've really come to embrace with Universal Design for Access is that by, by telling students, you have a choice and here are some options. But then when students also go above and beyond by sharing apps, um, like for example, a student recently shared a movie they made in KindMaster. 
And Kindmaster is a, is a quick uh, movie editing app. If you've ever used iMovie, uh, it's similar, but there's a lot more features with transitions, with titles, uh, with effects. Um, and if, you, if students are into movie making, which is increasingly becoming uh, a medium of instruction and learning and product creation, uh, it's dynamite. And, uh, and so after that student shared that with me, all of a sudden, Kindmaster is now on our list of uh, video making apps uh, in our digital tools database for other teachers to learn about. So that's uh, something. And also to piggyback on something that Mike said, uh, we just recently had parent teacher conferences a couple of weeks ago. And I think often, you know, we as teachers think that we need to sit down and tell parents what we think of their child and they tell us what they think of their child and the child's often sitting there just kind of twiddling their thumbs. And uh, we've started to move towards a student led conference model. I know we've used that in Korea, uh, which is extremely powerful because instead of us teachers talking about the learners, it's actually the learners sharing their learning with, with their parents and, and us. And uh, you know, like, like Mike said, sometimes parents are taken aback by what the child is doing and they have no idea, especially with teenage learners that are becoming more secretive and not very forthcoming about what they're learning about in school. Uh, it's a great opportunity for parents to see what their child's doing, the products they're creating, things they're learning about. And uh, for us to put the onus on the learner to have them share what they've learned, what they're proud of, uh, what are some interesting areas they've learned in their subject, and maybe also some areas for growth as a learner. Um, it's a really powerful thing. Uh, thanks, thanks, Gary. That's yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it comes back to those that the 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 accessibility of the technology for the students as well. So and and how they can access it. Um, Kerry Lee, I'm I'm really interested in how you're you're moving forward with this assessment and feedback side of things. And maybe I mean, if you could drop in possibly some experience on how you've done that with primary as well, because I know you're working with a lot of secondary at the moment because you've got a a lot of primary background as well. So yeah. maybe you can drop some of that in as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, being in China, we don't have access to all the tools that the rest of you have all, all the time. So we, we're being very creative. Um, and for the most part, we're using Teams as the platform that we, you know, collect assessments and give feedback in. But uh, during, especially during online learning, there's something about hearing your voice or seeing you in video that makes a difference to kids and it helps connect them particularly with those younger ones but, a, but even the high school ones they say they don't care or they might show you that they don't care but they really do um, so one of the things that we used was I used Loom I don't know if you've had a play around with that um, it's a screencasting app but um, it lets you do video feedback so you can talk through your thinking about the kids learning and vice versa so they can they can create them and so on and they have a nice free educator um, account too so check them out Loom um, and that was a really nice way of just saying to kids, hey, I know I haven't seen you face to face for ages, but I thought you did a great job on this. Or have you thought about this? And um, that got a lot of like it was I could definitely see. And you can also tell whether they've watched it and they have. So that's quite, um, quite nice to know that they're actually getting your feedback. Um, we use Padlet a lot for things like peer feedback and something that I, I mean, we you talked about um, accessibility features, which I think is really important, um, the visual nature of tools like Padlet um, or apps like Padlet uh, to, to let you post an, a link with a, with a, that comes with a thumbnail image and then have people respond and comment back. So a lot of the time we had kids make an initial post and then refer to a few people's different posts and then respond to each other's feedback, which was really powerful. Um, and now I'm sort of flipping over to the use of the iPad again. Um, even though we've got all these different tools at our disposal, something that I really like using is iDocio or iDocio, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, on the iPad to, um, for uh, assessment and feedback. It's super visual again, you can put little icons in. So I have you know, an icon that shows something's late, an icon that shows um, that I've emailed them about it or contacted their parents or something. So I can just quickly buzz through some of the, uh, as, I'm, as I'm marking to jot down a few more information, a few more pieces of information. But I can also take photos and put them in, add notes about specific things that I see in the classroom as I'm going around. So that's a tool that I've really enjoyed um, using. And of course, I'm sure that particularly primary teachers know um, Flipgrid is great for providing video evidence and feedback on on all manner of things. One of the nicest assignments I think we had last uh, last year for during lockdown was when we, we had the kids make some kind of a logo and they had to talk through the elements of design that they incorporated within it. But it was just so nice to hear their voices, particularly as someone who was online for a long time. And they did such a great job of, it was so thorough. In fact, 
significantly more so than if they had to write it down. It was um, well worth it for us. Thanks, Kerry. I, know, I, I totally agree. And I mean, that, the, and I think, you know, the, the ability for teachers as well to be able to vocally give feedback. I mean, there's so many fantastic apps out there that will actually allow that to happen as well. Things like Shobi and Seesaw and things mm -hmm. like that will allow you to give those vocal feedback as well. I think it, you know, it's really powerful. It's really powerful for, for children to be able to not only us to hear their voices, but for us, for them to really hear and also, you know, especially with the younger students, they they will they they're more likely to take it in rather than reading a comment that they might put on a on a document rather than listen and listening to it back. So, well, thanks for that. I mean, I, I want to keep with you, Kerry Lee, because um, I, I I just think um, it, I'd love to know how I mean, because we're kind of we're kind of touching onto a lot of this in terms of the productivity. How is the uh, the, 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 the access of Apple technologies and, and how you're using the Apple technologies as a teacher, how has it allowed you to be more creative as a teacher with your pro productivity in the classroom? Yeah, creativity and productivity, <laughs> they might sound like they're juxtaposed things, but they're, <laughs> but they're not. Um, some of the things that, that I've had success with um, is been, I created some student workbooks um, using pages. And I sort of modeled them over the everyone can create series of um, free professional learning books that I would suggest you check out for sure, um, put out by Apple. Um, and so they had, they had these they're just beautifully visually rich um, books that have fantastic ideas and step through different ways of sh um, showing how to do things. And so I created them for the different parts of the design cycle that we were looking at and students and placeholders. So I might have had like an iPad placeholder and then they can just drag their the photo of their sketch in. And um, in terms of productivity, it wasn't spending time having them create stuff and put it in. It was super quick because things like AirDrop is another productivity tool that I use all the time in the classroom. So they could just AirDrop from their phones to their laptop or straight in and, um, and off they go with that. So that was using um, Pages, which is one of the native apps on, um, on Mac and iPad. But I think don't underestimate the power of the camera tool. There's so much that you can do, <laughs> so much that you can do with just the camera. Um, so we use, we use the camera to make, um, to use clips for making quick movies or tutorials or how to's. Um, even an app called Quick, which is actually mm -hmm. one for the, what's that? GoPro. People, GoPro, thank you. Um, <laughs> the thing that people wear on the helmet. Um, so Quick does amazing videos, super quick, really uh, funky music in the background. Um, so instead of taking ages of time sort of documenting what's happening in the classroom, you can use those tools. And something I love too is time lapse. Stick, a time, stick an iPad or a phone up in the corner of your room before you launch into an activity. And you can do all sorts, you can show, like I always do that before we have parents meet the teacher nights so that they can get a sense of this is what our class looks like. This is a real, you know, a real look into what's happening in our classroom. But it's also good as a teacher to reflect, you know, am I seeing all the kids? Is there movement in my classroom? Or are the kids sitting down too much? Um, so there's a multitude of things that you can do with, um, with that. And I, don't want to say too many more things because I realise that the others have probably got brilliant ideas to chip in. So, <laughs> you know what, Kerry Lee, I, I love that idea about time lapsing uh, a, a, just a, a, a lesson or a class for the day or something. That's just brilliant because, like you say, to, to show parents that what is happening in a classroom, I think it's brilliant. And I, you know, I hope that hope those that are watching this. Uh, this webinar take that away because I think I mean that, that is just brilliant I love that idea and uh, I'm going to certainly recommend that with schools in the future um, uh, let's come on to you Gary um, um, what about you in terms of uh, um, yeah um, in terms of the productivity what has your workload gone down as a result of having the technology now the the to, to be able to um, the, the, well, the creative technology to be able to move forward with possibly you know reducing your workload with productivity I would say that that's a good question, Richard. I'd say that the one app that has really changed my whole workflow and my approach to teaching and learning is movie creation. And um, with that, I've used iMovie for a number of years, uh, but with that, I've also gotten to more 
uh, intermediate sort of level editing techniques using Final Cut Pro, which is uh, a little more professional grade uh, movie making platform, about $300, I think it is. Um, however, one, one thing that I've really come to embrace with movie production is that these can be great artifacts for teachers. So, you know, a lot of times I'm working on projects and I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to do things. I've often said to myself, hey, how about I just do a little quick screencast and like make a video and show someone else how to do this just in case. And sometimes I just, if I have time, I'll make it. And sometimes I'm asked to do it for staff training here. But sometimes I look at these videos on YouTube and they get like thousands of views over time. Like, wow, that was really well received. Like sometimes I, I don't know why, some, why something will go viral and why something will not. And um, sometimes like in the common stream, there's a lot of people like, oh my God, that was, that was great. That was such an easy, quick solution. Uh, and I know I've worked with you, Richard, on some projects involving JavaScripting and script writing and uh, in Google Sheets. And so... Um, for me, like video production has really helped me with my workflow um, and also create an archive because sometimes I work on projects and I might not come back to them a year or two later. I'm like, how did I do that again? So I'll look back on YouTube. Oh, that's how I did it. So it ends up being kind of a journal of sorts um, and also for teachers, professional portfolio uh, of their work. So yeah, video has been an absolute uh, great time saver for me. It's been a great way to document my work, to solidify my work uh, and to share it with a larger audience. No, I, I absolutely. And I think that, you know, with the devices that we've got, particularly the iPads, it just makes it, the video is so accessible. It's just so easy for the students to be able to record something, to actually post it. And I know, Mike, you do so much with, with the video stuff. I, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of your videos on Twitter and, and it is absolutely incredible some of the stuff that you do, you know, from, from doing, um, from making, uh, getting the kids to make um crazy golf courses and and things like that i mean and, and, a, and a chair out of cardboard i mean some of the some of the amazing things that you're doing with the students that i've seen on twitter and how the students can can um uh, record their own progress as well and, and as that helped you with you know with your own workload in how you would use those tools to, in terms of a product productivity i think it really has um thanks for that by the way and it's <laughs> All I do is get out of their way, you know, and I, I think that's the best thing with technology for productivity uh, is it gives our kids all these tools and you become a facilitator. I'm not spending time talking to the whole class. Uh, you know, I can give kids individualized feedback. I can give larger scale feedback. And it's just really that video thing is so strong, but not just the video, just the, the way that everything interacts so you can share this you can put this doc we have um we've gone back and forth to online blended online as most of y'all have this year uh and what's cool about that is a kid can come to my room the day maybe they don't see me that day but they've got like an open time and then come in and we can pull all their stuff up immediately i can pull it up kids can email me hey i'm off campus this week can you 3d print this for me can you do this and so it's just this seamless integration of these apps and technology and hardware. And what Carrie Lee was talking about with time-lapse, man, that is one of my favorite tools because uh, I'll have them set up, say, hey, somebody set up your iPad. And if, if you touched on my cardboard chairs project, which is just one of my favorite things to do, I make the kids build a cardboard chair that supports their weight and they can only use cardboard. Uh, but on build days, say set up your iPad and just do a time-lapse for 30 minutes and show me, and, and it's great because the kids sometimes don't think they're working as hard as they are. And they're really just up and around and moving and doing this, putting it together, test, retest, test, retest, or I'll set one up in the corner of my class. And it's great because we're looking at like, who's using what tools. Uh, and I can also sometimes point out to a kid, hey, maybe you could have, you know, use those goggles a little bit smarter there, buddy, when we're on the bandsaw. And uh, the kid, oh yeah, yeah. Um, but it's great. It's just such a, a nice interactive tool that, that can film whatever they're doing and break it down. And I think for me as a teacher, I don't have a, a pile of papers. I don't have anything I need to, to look at, right? Everything's here and I can pull it up when I want. And Gary talked about different times. And that's, I think, really powerful too, is that we've got all these artifacts from different times and I can pull stuff up. I have a kid graduating in a couple of weeks and he did his senior showcase and it was real. and he's an incredible designer. And I was like, hey, remember in eighth grade when you built that Raspberry Pi in my class? And he's like, I don't, and I was like, here's a video. 
let's look at it. And he's talking to the camera and he's like a foot shorter. And it was just so great to share that with him and say, look at this thing I found on my computer on my drive and look at how far you've come. You might not feel like you've made that huge strides, but your world's different. And it doesn't have to be a five-year gap. It can be a three month, the, the growth some of these kids have with their, their sketching and their annotating or their programming or whatever they're doing. That skill set they build so fast and we can show it off now. And I think that productive wise, because I'm trying to grade a lot and, and assess them on growth and meeting every kid where they're at and saying, yeah, you were here, but look where you're at now, looking at the things we are, right? I don't, I don't, it's not about what this other kid built and what that looks like. It's look where you were at and now look where you're doing. And that's, I think, been just the best tool to really showcase. And, and, and then it takes a ton of work off me, right? You don't have the huge pile of marking anymore. I'm just like, here you go. I got this thing from six months ago. Looks a little rough. Here's your stuff now. Looks good. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. I was just on. I just I had to unmute myself then. No, 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 some fantastic points there. I mean, I I I totally agree. I think that that ability to um, for students to go back and have a look at what they've done in the past, I think is is just because let's face it, you know, when you've done it when in the old fashioned way of doing it in exercise books, you know, you rarely go back and have a look. But when it's so accessible with with technology, you can go back. And like you say, it's about, yeah, look, look, look what you were doing a year ago. And look how far you've come forward. And then, you know, it's that ability for them to analyze that and say, well, yeah, and then critically think about the learning that they've been doing over that time period, and really, and then, and then it, that, that focuses on a lot of their analytical skills on how their learning has gone. And I think that's just a powerful tool that I don't think we could have done nearly as well in in the old way of doing things. And I, I just well, think that's sorry, go on. Oh, uh, well, even going to what Gary was saying about creating video and how powerful that is in YouTube and posting these videos, when our students create videos. And I know when I do, and you look at one you made two years ago, you're like, oh, oh boy. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't bad then, you know, it was still good, but you look at that growth and it's instantly obvious. It's, it's very clear to me. I love looking at how teachers integrated technology before all COVID happened. And now we look at teachers who might not have even thought of themselves as technologically proficient. Look, look at what you've done. Look at how far you've come. You know, when I did these screencasts of how to do something you know a year ago they were they were looking a little rough and now <laughs> like gary said you're putting them into into all these tools and polishing having like transitions and title cards it's like man i did that and my students are the same way right like they started here and now they're doing stuff that's that's miles ahead of it and it's instantly visible that growth even a, a year or a month with yeah. those little kids whose skill sets increase exponentially yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And I think, you know, they're, they're, uh, that whole model works throughout the age groups. You can be you can be looking at that at nursery level all the way up to, you know, high school um, level of, of, of showing their development. And what better way, you know, so, you know, the kids that are working now in in like very young kids, what what better way of showing their progress over the years and seeing what they've done? I mean, I know we do this as parents as well with our own kids, but but it's, you know, to, to see their learning happen. And I think, you know, technology really does enable that. Okay, thanks guys for that, for, for, those, uh, for those answers. I, I'd like to now ask you, um, so to really, uh, and I know we've, we've, we've come up with, and I know you've been talking about lots of different apps and tools already, but I want to know if there was one, and, and I'm, I'm, I think I can guess what these are going to be from you. But if there was one, um, if you could share one idea for creativity with, with the Apple technologies, what would it be? And, and do you have an app that you can recommend for both creativity? And I know you've been talking about some of these already, but I'll, let's see if we can be uh, specific. So let's go with um, uh, Gary. Let's let's go with you first this time. Um, you know what? <laughs> I think you said it's, it. It's like asking a parent which of their children is their favorite. <laughs> uh, it's hard it really depends it depends on on what teachers do you know for as a, as a former math teacher I use educations a lot uh, and tools like Doceri where students could manipulate and, and diagram a shape and make a movie of a shape um, so that for me was really fun um, but 
like you know Carrie Lee mentioned, I think Padlet is also one that uh, I just absolutely love. We use a lot of collaborative discussion boards, and with that in professional practice, but also with my students, uh, with faculty, uh, those would get my, my my two votes. Thanks, Gary. That's fantastic. Some really good apps there. What about you, um, Carrie Lee? What's uh, what's your recommendations there? I'm sure you've got loads. And um, feel free to uh, elaborate. You know, you don't. I don't have to. You don't have to stick to one. Okay. <laughs> So I've got one idea for, um, that I that I for creativity that I think goes across the board. With um, I hope you don't think it's too basic, but one of the things that I like to do when I'm introducing a new app is to give five minutes for kids to just play and see what they can find and push the buttons and you know whatever. And then maybe one or two minutes into it, I might add a couple of challenges on the board like can you figure out how to add a background or can you, you know, do you know how to uh, rotate a shape or whatever it is in the app? Um, and then when it gets to the five minutes and you put a timer on it, um, who's found something cool out that they want to share with the rest of us? And the kids love to share the things that they've discovered. And I swear to you, I have learned so much from doing this. Um, I thought I knew an app well, even like Procreate, which I've used quite quite a lot myself. I, some of the kids are like manipulating stuff. And like, I didn't know about the double tap of your pencil to undo something. Like all of that sort of stuff has come from kids and kids showing me how to do it. So that's probably an idea of creativity. But in terms of apps, I was hoping that I wasn't going to go last and therefore I'd have my first choice. Um, but I, I narrowed it down to two. I mean, it's tough. It is like choosing between your children. But um, I have two kids, so I've got two apps. How about that? Um, so I would say Keynote for me is probably the most versatile app in the whole suite for, for Apple. So in Keynote, you can do animations, like you can have cars moving down the road. You can make posters, like environmental awareness posters, whatever. Um, you can turn things into movies. You can make animated GIFs, which I do a lot for step-by-step -step instructions on how to do things. Um, you can do drawings. Um, you can create visually engaging presentations you can export things as pdfs so that's that's keynote but i'm going to come back to the camera app again and i know i already talked about time lapses but there's also slow motion so for science like i've seen kids uh teachers use it for showing how a ball bounces and what happens when it hits the ground and it sort of flattens out and just seeing those sort of or even like a kid in PE jumping a particular way or showing a throw and um, those sort of slow motion things are so fantastic igniting a flame you should try that it's really cool uh, carefully um, and another thing that people forget a lot is that in in photos uh, sorry in the camera app once you've taken a photo you can use markup to um, do all manner of things so one of the things that people might not know about is that you can use a magnifying glass to zoom in on a certain aspect of the photo, which is really neat. Um, but you can also draw on top of photos. You can create real life math problems from photos you've taken around the place. You can explain thinking and you can use live photos to create GIFs of expressions or evidence of movement or demonstrating how to do something. So I would say keynote, um, camera app and give them five minutes to play. You know what, uh, Kerry Lee, that's, uh, that, that's just fantastic. I mean, I totally agree with you. Keynote for me is my number one app. I would, I think you can do so much. I, I think you can do some advanced video editing stuff in Keynote that you would need sure. Final Cut Pro for that you can't do in iMovie. And I've done some stuff like that and I think it's brilliant. Um, so yeah, and also yeah, like you say, the camera app, it's got so versatile. It's so much you can do with it, um, with the, from the slow motion to the time lapse to the markup and everything like that. So some brilliant tips there, and 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 I, you know, that whole idea of getting kids to play, it, it, it's just so so important. You know, um, it, you can't just jump into an app without and and go into a, a sort of an area of the curriculum without them actually having a play. Like I mean, you know, they're not going to listen to you anyway. <laughs> Well, exactly, exactly. They're just going to want to play. Exactly. I mean, uh, um, you know, clips is a good example. When you when you give clips to kids for the first time, that, you know, just leave them to it, and they they will create some incredible stuff. They really will. So, yeah, you know, thanks for that, Kerry Lee. There's, there's some there's really great tips there, Mike. Uh, what's uh, what's your thoughts? If it hasn't Sorry been your already, last, Mike. I know you got <laughs> all my good stuff, um, but. 
yeah, it's it's you can't you can't go wrong with your real basic functionality, right? The the ability to take photos constantly, to take video. Um, you know, you talked about annotating or making voice notes. Um, we do that sometimes to mix it up a little bit. Just hey, you know, take a minute and record yourself um, and give yourself some feedback. Or peer feedback is a great one for that. And so you guys did your your photos, which is great, and keynote, which which can't be praised enough. Um, so I'm going to go a slightly different direction. And probably for me, because I teach a lot of design and a lot of engineering base, uh, would probably be Tinkercad, uh, which Tinkercad is, it's an app for the iPad or it's a website and it's all cloud-based and you, it's a really intuitive 3D design uh, program and it's got pre-rendered shapes and you can build a house or you can build and what's great about it is there's also an option that you can do circuitry with it and you can drop in a board and kind of design something and then drop the code for it and see, oh, hey, this is in Python or this is gonna look like this. And that's how you might code that to do this thing. And what's great about Tinkercad now is they're owned by uh, Adobe. And so you can take the stuff a kid is designing in so what, what one of the things we'll do is we try to integrate different age groups and try to do these cross um, class projects. So we did uh, ear savers for the masks and we brought in all the kindergarten kids to talk to the high school juniors and seniors who are taking CAD classes, the computer aided design. And we had the little kids, hey, here's Tinkercad, design up some stuff. And then the, the older kids can take it to Fusion. And then, oh, you can round off the edges, you can smooth this, and you can export it for a 3D printer, or you just have the design. And we talk a lot about showcase, like a lot of design is virtual, right? It doesn't have to have physical prototypes. So now I've got it in Fusion and I can take screenshots, I can do a GIF, I can do the videos, I can look at it from all these different angles and showcase it. And I think that, that any kind of design tool is really powerful and having the pencil, uh, I got one of these, this iPad, I love it so much and it is so great. And what's also cool is if a kid's doing a blueprint, I can go in and I can annotate it or it, I can do a, um, like a template and then share it with them and they're opening it up to their different programs and using it that way. And Tinkercad does that really well. You can share your designs with people. They can take it and make a copy of. And to kind of go off something Gary was talking about, man, uh, or Carrie Lee, like you give it to the kids and you let them do with it uh, the kind of things. Because my students will take something and, you know, one day this kid showed up with something in Tinkercad and I'm like, how? how? Like, that's my favorite thing to ask students. How'd you do that? Cause I don't know how you did that. And I'm, I'm pretty good with these design software. And the kid goes, well, you know, I went home this weekend. I spent like 10 hours on it. I'm like what? You know, we didn't have homework. Uh, you know, that wasn't a thing. And he, yeah, I just really like designing on this program. And I discovered these 17 things that I didn't know existed. And I've been using this program for four years. So cool, uh, but it's, it's humbling. They're so good and they do this stuff so fast and they approach it from so many different angles, right? That idea of a, stakeholder versus a user, right? I think it's going to go this, this, this. And the kid's like, no, no, we're over here now. And I'm like, that's much better than anything I would have done. Uh, and a lot of different kids will use that same platform in a totally different way. That's unexpected. And it just, again, it's universal design, right? Everybody's got an option to do it and to do it their way, even within an app, right? Like a single app, like look at what you can do with Keynote. And a kid's like, hey, I'm gonna do film editing. Hey, I'm gonna do this transition. I'm gonna do just a slide deck. None of those things are bad, right? They're all totally valid ways of learning and they're using the same platform in so many different ways. And every day I just love seeing the stuff they do because it's it's so much better than I would have ever expected. And then they're, they're self-critical about it much more than I would be too. Like whenever you ask them, hey, assess your own work using this. Oh, well, it's, I don't know, I guess it's a B or it's, it's okay. It's at standards. It's maybe not exceeding. And in my head, I'm thinking, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And you think it's at standards. Like it's, it's so much fun to do that with them and just hand them this software and say, man, do, do something cool with it.
Oh, thanks, Mike. I mean, it, it, it's so clear from just speaking to the three of you, the passion that you've got with this kind of thing and the education of, of the students. And, and it really, really comes out. And, it, you know, it, it, I, I feel exactly the same. I mean, I, and I've got to have my chip in now because for me, AR is just beginning. And for me, uh, reality composer on the iPad. So uh, that's the one that I would recommend. If you haven't had a go at reality composer, then uh, for anybody watching this, is that's the one that I would recommend as a as a tool. And I had to chip in there as, as well as being an educator myself. Okay, we get we're um, I'm I'm aware of the time. We've got about ten minutes left uh, of the webinar, but I want to I do want to ask this last question and just to just to maybe finish off. So, um, how has creativity enhanced student engagement, personalization of learning, and learning outcomes? And I do realise that. You probably said a lot of this already, but I know, Mike, you were where I didn't know whether you still want to share your screen and show something. So I'll come to you, Mike, first, um, if there was something that you wanted to share. Um, and then uh, if we'll come on to Gary and Kerry Lee in a second. Yeah, let me let me do this real quick. And I tend to talk a lot. So just feel free to say, Mike, just be quiet for a second. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to showcase. So it's creativity and, and technology has done so much for student agency and it's changed everything about the way I teach and, and taking it from my hands, it's not my classroom, it's their classroom. And so especially the way they present and assess their work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and I've pulled up some student websites. Um, and let me do this real quick. So is that, y'all can see that pretty good? Oh, okay. there's my note for this. Um, so this is a student who's uh, one of my high school kids and here's his website. So he's got, uh, it's his home page. He did a little biography. Uh, we did some of these intro projects and they can set it up however they want. So he's like, hey, here's my brainstorming. Here's what this looks like. Here's this, uh, you know, little journal, some revisions showing his code. Okay, here's iteration number two, number three, final product. He's got it, links to his videos, uh, his reflection. He did a little slide deck. Uh, and it's just, it's amazing to me what this kid can do. And what a great way to show off all these other things. When we were virtual, we had to switch. So I said, hey, let's pick a language you want to learn and show me what you're doing with it. So he made a little video of himself doing variables. And that was really powerful to me that this student has the agency to kind of present what they wanted. Uh, here's one of my eighth graders for robots. She did these little like time-lapse videos on the floor of what their robots look like. Here's a robot. Uh, here's her sketches of what she originally thought. Here's some designs. So it said, hey, make a sketch of it, make a, a design of it. What's that look like? And then they can add cute stuff too, right? Like, look at this project. Here's what this is. And then finally, I got to brag on, this is, this is my senior who's, oh my gosh. So he took this and as you scroll, right, he's just, here's his, he did a little phone case, right? And he 3D printed it. It's his charger and he put the, the cards on it. And my favorite thing that he's done is uh, he did this with a Nintendo Switch and he redesigned these grips on the side for it. And he can showcase it this way. And this kid is all visual all the time, right? Some of my other sites, they're more written, they're more video. He's all, he just wants to show his design process. So you scroll through and it kind of shows how you take this off. Oh yeah, now that's what that looks like. And as you go down, he's got his sketches that he's making and it just blows me away. Watch, this is my favorite part. Ready? Ready? Oh my gosh. Like I saw that and I was like, I will pay you to do this work for me. Uh, can you, can you look at this? And then like a kid who did independent study, that's not going to look like what anybody else did. So, you know, this is, this girl did these videos of her kind of showcasing her work on Blender and she's got all of her stuff here. And she did like a little day by day journal. because She's much more of a writer and she's gonna outline every single thing she's done. And it's all linked in here and I can pull it up. I can see the work she's done. And all these kids work looks different and they're all doing great things and they're all able to kind of put their stamp on it. And it just, it's a wonder to behold. Mm -hmm. Like it, it humbles me to see how great they can take these this technology and and do with it what they want. Uh, no, absolutely, and that, there's some incredible stuff there, Mike. I mean, it just uh, and nice to see Google Sites being used there as well. Just, <laughs> so, oh, but, um, a, a great resource, Google Sites for that kind of stuff. But obviously, there's lots of different um, 
different things yeah. that you could use for that kind of thing. Um, uh, Gary, wh what about yourself in terms of, uh, you know, the, 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 how it has in, in enhanced the, the student engagement and the outcomes? Sure. Well, you know, like Carrie Lee, I, I work as a coach. And for me, I look at a lot of work on how I can build capacity as staff to embrace some of these tools and these kind of approaches to teaching and learning. Uh, I think it's so easy for teachers to kind of get in like a rut after like years of teaching and they don't transform their practice that much. And, uh, you know, they're creatures of habit. They get entrenched with ways of doing things. But um, one thing, if I may mm -hmm. share my screen for a second, um, one, one thing that I, that, that I, I'm kind of looking at this from a few different lenses is how we can recognize staff and, and generally you know in any population you have the early innovators on a bell curve then you have the early adopters and the late adopters and the holdouts and so um, in order to kind of increase the, the possibilities of what they can do we we have a drop down list of digital tools uh, on our all things tech website so we'll direct people to this uh, if they have any questions about for example ar and vr uh, richard i'm going to add reality composer to this when we're done uh, <laughs> I'm actually doing a big project with CoSpaces this week um, and next week with the high school design teachers. They're actually creating visual or virtual galleries that students will use to showcase cultural artifacts. Uh, but then directing people to these as, as possible resources for projects they have on the horizon. So it's basically uh, a place that kind of gives a quick overview to what these can do. The expectation is that people are experts in all of these. Uh, one thing I think we did really well in Korea was we actually had a list of suggested apps that at grade level teachers and the students are familiar with. And from those, those 20 suggested apps, if there's others they want to incorporate into their practice, uh, they can. Another thing I've also done to really help kind of recognize the work that we do is uh, we've been really kind, uh, or our administrators have been great of giving us time uh, to present what are called demo slams. And these are really informal ways that teachers can kind of share their learning uh, organizational habits, tools that help them with productivity. So, you know, we have just, this is just a common note here in Google Keep where my administrators and I chit chat about, hey, this person's doing this really well. Maybe we want to reach out to them and see if they'd be willing to share in two minutes how they're using that. So that way there's kind of a little micro PD happening in the background. And then finally, um, on our school's website, we have an innovation uh, blog and I'll use this to kind of share bright spots with faculty. So collaborative projects that I've worked with um, certain individuals to hear, I've highlighted um, a teacher that I worked with for uh, the high school virtual, this was actually, we had our IB art show completely online or online. And so uh, this was kind of just a little play by play in how we did that. So, you know, all these things, uh, are not, I mean, using the tools is one thing, but how to teach the staff how to use them is, is a whole nother challenge. And uh, it's different for everybody, but uh, these are some of the things we're doing here at FDR to, the, to kind of share that vision. No, thanks for that, Gary. I mean, it's, again, some fantastic stuff there. And, and you're absolutely right. It is about, you know, we've got to inform the teachers because a lot of teachers don't know what they don't know. So we've got to, we've got to give them the tools to be able to, to, to find that stuff. Um, uh, finally, Kerry Lee, um, uh, what are your thoughts on this, um, uh, on sort of the, the student engagement and how you're maybe supporting teachers? I'm quite lucky in that um, I teach design as, as the subject that I teach, as well as being a coach. Um, and design is really a good one for creativity. But um, like Gary mentioned, you can get stuck in a rut sometimes. And I think one of the, one of the things I'm proud of that the design team has um, trialed was having students create their own assessments. And usually what would happen in a project is we would say, here's your project. We're gonna assess you on these things. Um, here's the rubric giddy up sort of thing but what we did this time was we gave them the design cycle and said we've got a project coming up it's on this um, choose which things you want to be assessed on and then tell us how that you're going to um, how you're going to show your learning for it to prove basically that you've done enough to meet the um, meet the MIP criteria or the MIP um, rubric which we are use, using at the school so here's the rubric for everything here's the design cycle, how are you going to bridge those two gaps? And I think what we saw then was we saw an increase in engagement because they were choosing the ones that they thought that they were going to be able to do the best job in. Um, they could choose how they were going to do it further to um, Mike's point about, you know, giving kids options of how they're going to present things and share their understanding. So in, in that, I had a conversation with one kid, that was how they were going to demonstrate their learning so they had a chat with me about some things I asked them some questions and then I got a much better sense of understanding of how they were thinking about uh, the concept than I would if I had said and you need to write me a 
you know, three paragraphs about this. Um, and like we saw all sorts of different learning types being showcased and also they just weren't bored. <laughs> it was, you know, they, they could choose whatever they wanted. They could play to their strengths. And, um, and for us, it was super interesting to see the ones that they chose. And, and I think they did a really good job. And interestingly, that was one of the assignments that had the biggest uh, like hand in rate. You know, sometimes you get kids, especially on online learning, they trail off a little bit, but, um, but that was a really good success story for us. So I'd encourage you to give that a go. Oh, thanks. Th thanks, Kerry, for sharing that. There's, that, that, there's I mean, there's been some, some really fantastic things uh, that you've been, you've all been uh, uh, talking about today, and uh, the those that have attended, uh, if uh, th that that's the end of the webinar now, I hope you managed to get uh, some really good information out from the uh, from the webinar, some great um, tips and tricks, and some thoughts and ideas that have come from uh, Mike, Gary, and Kerry Lee today. So thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you at our next webinar. Uh, in June sometime. Thank you.